In the previous video, we calculated the rate of heat loss due to conduction through a lagged pipe, but we didn't consider the surface heat transfer coefficients. So in this video, we're going to follow exactly the same process, but we're also going to include the convection effects, first of all, at the inside of the steel pipe, as a result of the contact with the fluid traveling through the pipe. And we're also going to include the convection effects at the outside surface of the insulation. So we've specified a surface heat transfer coefficient of 125 watts per meter squared Kelvin for the inside surface of the pipe, and a value of nine watts per meter squared per Kelvin for the outside of the insulation. As mentioned in an earlier video, these values are primarily affected by whether the fluid at the boundary is moving. So in this case, we have a very high surface heat transfer coefficient for the fluid flowing through the pipe because we're assuming that the velocity is relatively high, whereas the air on the outside we're assuming has very little movement. The values that we're using for the steel pipe are exactly the same. We have a thermal conductivity of 65 watts per meter per Kelvin and an outside and inside diameter of 140 millimeters and 95 millimeters respectively. Our insulation has the same value of thermal conductivity, 0.1 watts per meter per Kelvin, except this time we've specified that the thickness has been increased from 22 millimeters to 32 millimeters. As the data for the steel pipe is unchanged, our thermal resistance for that layer remains unchanged. So it remains as 9.4946 times 10 to the minus 4 Kelvin per watt. So the first step, as before, is to produce a sketch indicating our radiuses in metres. So if we have the centre of our pipe, we have the inside radius of the pipe, we have the outside radius of the pipe, and we have the outside radius of the insulation. So labelling each of these, as we did before, the inside radius of the pipe is half the inside diameter. Well, the inside diameter is 95 millimetres. So the inside radius then is 47.5 millimetres, or 0.0475 metres. We also said that the outside diameter of the pipe was 140 millimetres, so the outside radius must be 70 millimetres, or 0.07 metres. Now finally, we have a lagging thickness of 32 millimetres, 32 millimetres is 0.032 metres. Therefore, the radius from the centre of the pipe to the outside of the lagging, indicated here, must be 0.07 plus 0.032, which is 0.102 metres. Now, we already have R1 for the steel, so we're just going to calculate R2. So R2 is the natural log of the outside radius of the lagging, 0.102, divided by the inside radius of the lagging, which is the same as the outside radius of the pipe, 0.07, divided by 2 pi times the thermal conductivity, 0.1, times the length, and we're doing our calculations on per meter of length. This gives us a value of R2 equal to 0 0.5992 Kelvin per watt. Now you'll note that this value is higher than the previous thermal resistance for the insulation because we've increased the thickness, and in doing so we've increased the thermal resistance. So next we need to calculate the thermal resistance values resulting from the contact with the fluid. Now the formula that we use for this is as follows. Thermal resistance equals 1 over HA. So let's begin by doing this for the hot side. We have RH equals 1 over 125 times the area. Now we have to be a little bit careful when it comes to calculating the area because what we're looking for is the surface area of the inside of our pipe. So it's helpful here to do a small visualization. If we have our pipe, like so, and we want to work out the surface area, I want you to imagine that we cut down one side of the cylinder and then we open it out flat. What we would see 
is a rectangle. So if this was our cut edge here along the top, then we know that that length must be the same as the length of the cylinder. And the other length represents the circumference of this circle round here. Now the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Therefore the contact area is going to be 2 pi r times the length. And it's that value that we need to use because we're calculating the thermal resistance due to the fluid that's in contact with that surface. So let's plug some values into our formula. We have 2 pi times the radius of the inside surface, 0.0475, times the length, and we're using a length of 1. So it's 1 divided by all of that. Therefore, our value of Rh comes out to be 0 0.0268 to 4 decimal places. And once again, that's Kelvin per watt. So we have one more thermal resistance to calculate, and this is for the outside surface, or the cold surface in this case. So we have RC, 1, divided by the surface heat transfer coefficient for the outside, 9, times the contact area, 2 times pi times the radius, this time it's the radius to the outside of the insulation because it's that surface that's in contact with the air. So 0.102 times the length, and once again, we're using the length of one meter. That gives us a value equal to 0 0.1734 to four decimal places. Okay, so let's clear some space and then we can do our final calculations First of all, calculating the total thermal resistance. And secondly, calculating the rate of heat transfer per meter. So the next step then is to calculate our total thermal resistance. And we have four thermal resistances to add together. We have the thermal resistance of the steel, R1, next to our diagram. We have the thermal resistance of the insulation, R2. We have the thermal resistance due to the fluid contact inside the pipe and we have the thermal resistance due to the fluid contact on the outside of the insulation. So R total then, adding each of those together, comes out to be 0 0.8003 Kelvin per watt, and that's accurate to four decimal places. So finally then, the rate of heat transfer per metre of length equals the hot temperature of 85 minus the cold temperature of 8 divided by 0 0.8003 which comes out to be 96.2 watts per metre accurate to one decimal place. Now notice that that's lower than the previous value where we had thinner insulation and we didn't include the surface heat transfer coefficients. So with thicker lagging, we can reduce the amount of heat loss as we would expect. And by including our surface heat transfer effect, we also see a slight reduction in the rate of heat transfer from the hot fluid to the surrounding air.